Hello and welcome to this latest lesson in the Year 7 Computer Systems Unit of Work. In the last lesson we spoke about analog and digital devices. Before you start today, can you pause the video at this point and see if you can remember what an analog device is, what a digital device is, and then which one you would say was better. Now if you need to, you can use the internet, the person next to you if you've got one, uh, or any work from last year. Pause the video at this point and note down the answers to this do now task. So as I said, this is the sixth lesson in the Year 7 Computer Systems series of work. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at something called binary data. As part of the lesson, we're going to remember what the terms analog and digital mean from last time. We're going to begin to understand what binary is, and we're going to have a solid look at binary numbers and a little bit about binary text. So just to quickly recap the last lesson, uh, you will know that computers work on electrical signals. Computers are definitely electronic devices. There are two ways of transmitting electronic signals called analog and digital. An analog, system, an analog signal sorry, uh, is constantly changing, like the graph on the right-hand side. The signal can be any value on the y-axis. There are lots of different values going up and down. An example of an analog device is a uh, clock with hands, an analog clock that you might see on your wall. If you zoomed in close enough, the hand is constantly changing, and we can think of that hand as representing the, the electronic signal. Okay, It's constantly moving around the clock, and if we zoomed in really, really close, we'd see even the hour hand constantly moving just a little bit. A digital signal is another way of transmitting data, but it's very, very different. A digital signal can only be on or off, a one or a zero. Rather than gradually changing, a digital signal snaps between one and zero. There's no in-between. The signal is either fully on or fully off. There is no 0.6 or 0.3. The signal is one or zero, but nothing else. Now on paper, uh, an analog signal seems much better, but in reality, more and more devices are now moving over to digital. So why is that? Well, an analog signal is very susceptible to interference. Uh, an analog signal could be flying through the airwaves from your uh, sky, uh, you know, sky satellite to a sky dish, and it could get lots of interference. Things like clouds and rain could interfere with that signal. A digital signal doesn't get that same kind of interference. So a couple of years ago, we had something called the digital switchover for TV in the UK, and that was to move from an analog signal to a digital one. When the TVs were analog, you could quite often get a distorted picture like the one on your screen now, and that told you that there was some interference on your line. Digital is better because uh, even if there is a little bit of interference, we can normally still work out whether the signal is a 1 or a 0. If the signal is interfered with and it becomes 0.8 volts, for example, we could know that that should be 1 volt because we know that only 0 and 1 are the acceptable values and therefore 0.8 must be a signal of a 1. Last little recap from last time, here's sort of that shown in graphical format. We've got our electrical magnetic interference in the middle, and we can see that the analog signal has definitely changed. There's been an irreversible change to the analog signal. I couldn't really work out what the analog signal is meant to be. But with the digital signal, it's still pretty obvious that the higher bits are a 1 and the lower bits are a 0. So quite a complex topic there and a very quick recap, but in short, a digital signal is better because uh, it's not as susceptible to interference and we can normally solve any problems with interference when a signal is transmitted. However, we know that a digital signal can only represent the numbers 1 and 0. Now, if I was transmitting a TV signal, we could say that a 1 is the colour blue and a 0 is the colour red. But that's not going to make a very good TV picture. If all of our TV shows were made up of blues and reds but nothing else, that wouldn't be all that great. Now this is where this idea of binary comes in, and this is the last bit we're going to be looking at in this computer systems unit. 
Imagine, imagine a digital device is like a light switch and then the light switch can either be on or off. And that means we've got two options. So if you asked me a question, I could turn my lights on for yes and I could turn my lights off for no. That's okay. But what if I wanted to say maybe or I don't know or I'm not sure? Well, now imagine we've got three light switches in series and they represent three light bulbs. With my three light bulbs, I can now represent nine different combinations. So all of my bulbs off could mean uh, no. All of my bulbs on could mean yes. One of them on could mean uh, I don't know. Two of them on could mean I'm not sure. And a different combination of two on could mean uh, can you repeat the question, for example. Now you can see as I increase my number of light switches, I massively increase my number of options. Now, what would happen if we had a million light switches in a row? Think about how many combinations of options I could have if I had a million light switches. That basic example is exactly what a computer's CPU is, the head of Archie. A CPU is millions of tiny switches in a row that can either be on or off. And those millions of switches give us billions of different combinations. So a modern computer can represent 16 million different colours without breaking a sweat and it can do that by using some of its different switches, by switching them on and off in different combinations to represent all of the different colours that the human eye can see. Imagine the first eight switches inside of your phone CPU. Uh, the ones mean on and the zero means off. We might have some code then that looks like 101000011. And that just represents, is the switch on or is the switch off? And that is called our binary code. And that's how all of our digital devices work. They don't work with one digital switch, they work with millions of digital switches, all of which can be on or off to represent lots of different things. Now, this is a very, very complex topic. It forms a big part of the GCSE and then the Computer Science A level. But for now, let's just think of binary as that. Ones and zeros that can represent ons and offs to give us lots of different options when we're transmitting a digital signal. I'd now like you to pause the video and open your poster from last week. We split our poster into three. One of our sections was analog, one of our sections was digital, and I'd now like you to create your third section, which is going to be binary. I'd then like you to give a basic definition of what binary is and why you think it's needed. Think about how useful a computer would be if it was only blue and red. You might use the light switch example that I've given to help you explain the concept of binary. Now, like I said, this is a tough topic. I'm not expecting loads of detail here, but a couple of sentences, sentences just to show that you've got the gist of what this idea of binary is. Pause the video at this point and add in your basic definition. So one binary digit, one, one, or zero, is called a bit, and one bit represents one switch. Binary nearly always comes in groups of eight, uh, and those are called a byte. So if I have eight switches in a row, that is called a byte. And that's where we get terms like megabyte and gigabyte from. The first thing we might want to do is to look at our binary code and convert it into a normal number, a human number, and that's called a deanery number. Now to do that, we follow three quite straightforward steps that will make sense when we look at some practical examples in a moment. We firstly label the numbers from right to left, starting at one and doubling each time. So one, two, four, eight, sixteen, and so on. We then note down any numbers that are switched on. Remember, a 1 means that the number is on. We then add up all of the numbers that are on. Now, well, let's look at a practical example or two that will help that make a little bit more sense. So on this slide, we've got two binary numbers, 00001011 and the same but ending 111. I want to convert those to a normal number. Now my first step is, is to label them along the top. 
1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and 128. Now remember, any number that's got a 1 underneath it is switched on. Any number that's got a 0 underneath it is switched off. So in my first example, I have got a 4. My 4 is switched on, so I note that down. I've also got a 1, because my 1 is switched on. So that binary number becomes the number 5. I look at all of the numbers which are switched on, add them up, and get my answer. In my next example, I've also got a 4. But this time I've got a 2, and I've got a 1. I add those up and I get my answer of 7. Now again, this seems like a complex uh, set of sort of uh, an activity, but when you break it down into those st uh, straightforward steps, it's not too bad. Now in the comments section below, in the description below, I've added a link to a binary game. Now this is a nice fun game to help you practice converting numbers from deanery to binary and a couple back again. OK, so uh, I'd like you to play through the game. It's fairly straightforward. You've got to answer questions before they reach the top. And if they all reach the top, then it is game over. See how high you can uh, you can get. Give yourself about 10 minutes on this game uh, and see what what high score you can get. You can then post that in the comments section below. Pause the video at this point. Jump in the description section and have a go on the binary game. So I would now like you to add into your poster how binary numbers work, a basic overview of how we convert binary numbers using the three steps from the previous slide. Remember, you can pause the video and go back and have another look if you need to. Uh, it might be that you could add in a couple of examples. I think examples are a really good way of helping you understand the work. So you could come up with some examples of your own. You might then come up with a step-by-step -step guide for somebody else to convert binary numbers of their own. Pause the video at this point to give yourself about 10 minutes uh, to add in your binary number uh, section of work. So to finish off uh, this topic on binary, we now know how numbers work and that's great, but what about letters? How would I convert a binary number of 01010111 into a letter. Well, the number 32, when we convert our binary number into an answer and it becomes 32, doesn't actually represent 32. It represents row 32 in something called a character set table, often called an ASCII table. Okay, now what the computer does is it looks at row 32 and gets whatever the value there is. So, for example, the number 32 actually represents a space. The number 83 represents a capital S. And the, uh, the number 123 represents a curly bracket. Here's an example of a character set table called an ASCII table. Now, if you look at your decimal column, the column in blue, you can then look up the number. And you'd go to the green column to find out what that actually represents. So 115, for example, represents a small s. And this is how we can make binary numbers represent lots of different things. The binary number 52, for example, actually represents the digit 4. So it, once you know how to convert from binary to deanery, it's then very easy to convert to lots of other things because you simply look them up in a character set table. So to finish off today's lesson, I'd like you to explain how binary uh, letters uh, work in your poster. Now that should only need a sentence or two because that's fairly straightforward. Uh, it might be that you can add in some detail about what a character set table is. Why are they so useful? Why do they make the next step really straightforward? And as a final point, I'd like you just to finish off your poster in terms of its design. Make sure you've got a consistent font and that all of the elements are easy to read. Now, as I said, this is a really, really tough topic. I'm hoping you understand the gist of what uh, analog and digital are. Hopefully you've got some sort of idea around binary and something to do with this idea of a character set. But don't worry if you're not entirely confident on this. This is something you'll revisit in year eight and again as part of the computer science GCSE.
So pause the video at this point and add a final sentence or two to explain how a character set table allows us to represent letters with binary numbers. So thank you for watching this lesson in the computer series, uh, computer systems topic of work. As I said, this is a really complex topic, um, but hopefully one you now are beginning to understand. You've hopefully remember, remembered what the terms analog and digital mean. You're beginning to understand what binary is, and you've got an understanding of how we convert from binary to a deanery or normal human number. As always, if you have any questions, please post those either onto Google Classroom or into the comments section below. Thank you very much.